doesn't usually migrate, but sometimes it does go south. Rare sighting. Sornia Ulula, more hawk than owl, strayed from his boreal forest to hunt small prey in the Catskills for a while. Perched high on his lookout, his yellow eyes surveying the land for voles and frogs, he seemed ordinary enough, gray and white, not large or small. His genius was subtle. Tiny serrations at the end of flight feathers silenced his lethal loop, quieting the hunt for unsuspecting prey, though he did have an unusual cry, a quick swelling ululation, a large sound for his size. Suddenly he took off, swooping down fast, talons out, brushing past heads, just missing eyes, hands, skin. Um, Return is a setting of three of my poems that will perform in a row. The set is called Return because each poem refers back to an earlier time. And the first is while listening to the music from The Thief of Baghdad in honor of my father's favorite movie, The 1940 Thief of Baghdad. The flute music is by Robert with a quotation from Miklas Rosa's score for the movie. The second poem, Tango Triolet, looks back to the song Volver, which means to return, which was written in 1934 by French Argentinian composer Carlos Gardel, who died in a plane crash at the heart of, height of his career a year later. Um, the third melodrama at the Biograph takes place during the last day of the fugitive John Dillinger's life in July 1934, the hottest day of the year, when he went to cool off at the Biograph uh, Theater, the only air-conditioned place in Chicago. My poem also refers to Clark Gable's character Blackie from the film Manhattan Mel Melodrama that was playing at the time. While listening to music from The Thief of Baghdad, the Earth's geography always seems so flat to me. But now topography suddenly alive sings the senses of the world. Basso mountain chords, ocean salt, sweet taste of rivers and lakes. Island keys turn major or minor under chromatic skies, peppered with staccato bird trill in grays and blues. While silver sca sa scaled fish swim a steady legato, deserts cleft by forgotten storms notated by darker dunes, empty arteries of sand, carry hooded riders on horseback, rough-voiced, calling to each other through heat and wind. She walks in tango, white skin pink in the longer's red light. Carlos Gardel on the radio. She walks in tango, backward and forward, fast and slow, eyes full of heat, solemn and bright. She walks in tango, white skin, pink, in Malonga's red light. I spent vernissage circling plains with Merwin and O'Connor. When riders worry, they do God's job, she said to Bill, who replied, each stone leads back to a mountain. 
I couldn't keep up with this conversation even if I weren't four shots down on an empty stomach and hadn't been drunk the night before with E.E. E. who told me, live by love though the stars walk backwards. Accepting oneself does not preclude an attempt to become better, she said, adjusting those crazy ass glasses. Here's our drinks, I boast and declare, no longer the dumber of the three. A lot of these poems are going to have to do with trains because we, my wife and I have been going back and forth to New York City a lot lately for different reasons. And I took a trip down there just last week, and this is called Secondhand. I'm in the seat behind the cat people, so imagine my joy to overhear how Buzzy reacts to the burrows. He sneezes in the Bronx. He pisses in Manhattan. He shits on Staten Island. Good for him, I say. Tizzy shrinks from dogs, all dogs, big dogs, small dogs, linear, lost. Suzzy was a rescue and still has reservations. The Persian piddles in his sleep. The rag doll sings that streetwise song. 